a special celebration of the Earth Day. Today we arrive at uh, the National Maritime Museum, and this is the first uh, relics. This is the uh, relics of um, whale sharks, and is made into specimen. This is a very rare and precious specimen of whale sharks. So today we would like to take this opportunity to take you around the National Maritime Museum. It is only opened last year, and uh, today we will be taking you to an, uh, to a close contact with uh, the uh, maritime lives and environment, and we will show you the newly opened polar exhibition of the museum. You can follow us on our official website, and uh, many school children are also following this live broadcast as part of their extracurriculum activity. So first, this is Dr. Huang, who is in charge of uh, the um, layout and uh, curation of this uh, museum. So we've been closing down due to the um, uh, outbreak. What uh, would you like to say to the potential visitors? First of all, I'd like to thank all of uh, you for your support during the close down. Since the outbreak, we have been closed down according to the instructions of uh, governments of all levels. Strict measures were implemented. We have a temperature check um, room and quarantine room in our museum. We also have, uh, have been done some renovation during this periods of uh, closure in order to enrich our exhibits. And we'll be opening up four more exhibitions after we um, reopen our whole museum. During the outbreak, we also have been working with the social workers to um, help them with their control and prevention work. We also have opened up online exhibition hall. We also have opened up uh, the um, maritime radio and classrooms so that uh, our visitors can interact with us online. And we are receiving very positive feedbacks. So it's an online and offline combined um, education programs. So besides a place to visit, it is also a place to give education. So there are a lot of uh, live streams during the outbreak so that you can take a digital tour online. It's a uh, real time and uh, very lively um, tourist exhibition. So actually, we didn't uh, we closed down the museum, but uh, we didn't uh, stop the education process. We're hoping that people can still pay visit to us despite the outbreak. And right now, it's very difficult to make reservations because you only allow a limited number of uh, uh, visitors uh, even after you reopen. And people are interested in this um, um, layout and curation of uh, the museum. 
So hopefully we can give them an opportunity to know more about the maritime knowledge. And today is World Earth Day. And uh, right now we're walking at the exhibition hall called Today's uh, Oceans. 70% of the Earth are oceans. That's why the Earth is blue and uh, the maritime life is closely related to uh, human beings as well. So this is one of the most important exhibitional system in our museum. Today is the 51st National um, World Earth Day. And today, our theme is to cherish Earth, earth and uh, national and uh, uh, natural resources. We have uh, um, curated a series of online exhibition and classrooms so as to um, pass on some of the uh, knowledges, knowledge about Earth and about maritime environment. It's really a fun learning process. After we reopen, there will be more exhibitions, for example, the experience of maritime disasters. And we also have, um, we also will be opening up a new exhibition hall with uh, um, lively maritime creatures, uh, with living creatures, instead of uh, the specimen or models. We also have exhibition centered around maritime technologies. So there are a lot of rich content after the reopening. And uh, we are expecting the reopening very soon. We'll take a look at some of the exhibits. I've been here many times since it's first opened. This is a must see if you are to visit this, this museum. And today we have with us um, our staff here uh, who will give us a, a very good introduction, very detailed introduction of this exhibition. This is Ms. Li Xingtao. So this is a, a tour of uh, the Maritime Maritime Museum. Today is the World Earth Day. And today our theme is to cherish Earth, Earth and uh, the peaceful coexistence between men and ocean. We're seeing a lot of uh, maritime creatures, plants, and animals in this exhibition hall. They are coexisting with us, but many of them are facing the danger of extinction. Uh, so we we'll take this opportunity to take you to look at some of the signature um, animals. These are sea turtles. Can you tell us which do you think is the prettiest sea turtles of them all? It is this one. This uh, sea turtle is called the Dai Mao or um, Hawksbill turtle. It has very beautiful texture and pattern on its shell, despite the fact that it's not the biggest in size. On its head, you can see very big eyes. And um, you can see very smooth and uh, uh, bright patterns on its shell. So on average, the length is about 0 0.6 meters. It mainly inhabited, inhabited in, in shallow waters. 
and they live on the uh, sponge, sea sponge, sea foam. Many consist of uh, a the same chemicals as glass. So it has very strong digestive uh, system. There are also other um, creatures that is the uh, food of uh, these sea turtles, such as jellyfish. These kind of uh, sea turtles have very little natural enemies because of its hard shells, and it's also very bad tempered, very aggressive. So if he felt threatened, he might uh, launch the attack. There are very, there are illegal dealers that uh, would seek and capture this kind of turtles for its beautiful shells. So we are seeing a dwindling number in, of this creature, and it's now very difficult to see. Um, naturally inhabited um, tur sea turtles like this, which is a pity to us. That's why it is important for us to implement policies and uh, establish natural reservoir. And it's also the level two protected animals in China. So we also call for the shutdown of all the illegal dealings of such a precious animal. This is another marine time creature. This is the uh, biggest uh, um, marine time creature known so far. Uh, this is uh, called the ocean giant, the um, whale sharks. It can be as long as 20 meters. This one we have here is uh, nine point. It's about nine meters in length. It's not the biggest one. It's actually a specimen. Uh, we some of them are models, but these are real specimen. It takes a lot of technique to preserve it. Uh, we can see some patterns on this back. With uh, it, the color is gray on the back and white on its a ba uh, uh, abdomen. We can also see some uh, uh, dots and uh, stripes on its back, and the, the scientists can tell their um, their species from its patterns. By hanging it up, we can see very clearly all the details of this uh, whale shark. It is very big in size, but uh, its eyes are quite small. It has about 300 teeth. Sounds scary, but uh, these teeth are not uh, aggressive at all. This creature is not aggressive at all because it feeds on um, very small particles and uh, mini creatures and planktons in the water. So it's a very gentle giant in the sea. It also swims very slowly. We can see that uh, some of the divers uh, are uh, can play with the whale sharks. It does not have a lot of natural enemies due to its size. And its biggest enemy is actually us because uh, there are a lot of bad customs in many places such as whaling. So due to this uh, very vicious hunting and whaling in many places, its number is reducing rapidly. Right now, there are only about 7,000 natural whale sharks in the ocean. 
if we do not protect them properly, we'll only have a specimen to see. So it is in our hope to know more about this knowledge and make different choices in terms of our lifestyles. This is a very giant clam, which is also used as a, a material for making ornament, which is also bad for the environment. We shouldn't be destroying the environment um, to satisfy our own desires. This is a uh, what we called a manta. It almost looks like a bat in a way that it moves in the ocean. Uh, we also sometimes call it devilfish because it's a very naughty creature. It would uh, sneak to the bottom of uh, fishing boats and clap the boat with uh, its wings. That's why it is named uh, as the devilfish. And next, we'll take a look at another creature. Let's take a look at uh, this side. This is what we know as a Chinese sturgeon. It's also an endangered species. It is known as uh, the um, Chinese sturgeon or Cynesis. It has been in the ocean for hundreds of years. It has uh, five uh, spines. It is uh, a maritime creature, but during its uh, mating season, it would uh, go to the Yangtze River um, to um, to give birth. Currently, people have developed the habit of uh, taking the um, the eggs of such a species to use them as uh, dietary materials. So if we do not protect them properly, they will probably go extinct in about 50 years. So we have plastic uh, um, specimen and glass specimen using different uh, technologies. Uh, we have uh, a different uh, tour guide in different sections. This is uh, the section for the uh, sea, for the uh, ocean birds, uh, marine time birds. These are some of uh, the uh, creatures here. This is uh, the Mandarin duck. And these are pelicans. They are very big mouse. These small birds. Have uh, they ha they have uh, a brown head and it's known as yi o. It is a bird that is forgotten by many. When we first discovered it, uh, we 
originally thought that it was uh, a um, um, that it was uh, a hybrid. However, right now uh, we have discovered that this is a pure breed. Uh, we have uh, set up a national reservoir and wetland parks. Uh, that is uh, designated as the protection zone for such species. On this end, we can see that this is uh, the um, maritime uh, wetland. These are heavens for um, birds and wild animals. So wetlands are important to adjust um, temperature as well as uh, uh, humidity in the environment. Uh, we have already taken a look at uh, the sturgeon, and now we are arriving at uh, the um, the exhibition hall for the red forest, or also known as mangrove forest. This is a exhibition for the habitat of mangrove forest, but they are not in a color red, as the name suggests. They are actually green. And beneath this forest, there are also a lot of um, clams or shells and fish underneath. So mud are gathered here to form uh, nutri nutrients. And uh, this will also be served as food for birds. It can also prevent tides uh, from uh, uh, going in into the inland. These are some of uh, the forest stations that we can see. One of them is known as uh, the um, known as uh, the uh, candelia. It is usually found in the southern part of uh, China, but right now, due to human activities. The uh, categories of uh, mangrove forests are also dwindling. These are some of the specimens of uh, the um, of the vegetations here. The mangrove uh, forest is important for the protection of the environment. And for birds, this is also a um, natural habitat for them. If we protect the natural environment, it will mean win-win to us, humans, as well as animals. Otherwise, it will mean dismay and destruction. This is a uh, a king squib, and it's also one of the star exhibit. We mentioned a lot of uh, marine time creatures which are familiar to us. 
But uh, what creatures can we find? Can we find in the polar regions? This is something. This is a place um, that uh, we will be focusing on today. Because this will be a newly open area after the um, reopening of such a museum, and it's the first time for most of the audience to visit this hall online. So we we'll give you a head start. And the polar exhibition, there are a lot of. Uh, Exhibits as well as uh, um, activities. We'll be seeing polar bears, penguins, and seals. We actually start from the second floor, and uh, right now we're going down to the first floor, and uh, the polar exhibition is on the third floor. It has three floors in total. And one basement underneath. So in total, four floors. So we suggest that if you take your kids here, you spend a whole day and take a close look at all of the、um, exhibitions. This is the first floor, and this is the Asian Ocean Exhibition Hall. Telling you about、uh, the history of the ocean. I remember during our first live stream here, it has uh, uh, red lights that help you to divide the different historical period. I really lo love the curation in this exhibition hall. It is very well designed in、um, the placement of the specimen as well as the layout and structure of the hall. And、uh, we are coming near to the、uh, polar section, but before that, we will be、uh, we can have a look at the outside of、uh, the、um, museum. It it is actually built very adjacent to sea.、And、right now, you can take a look at the ocean from land, which also signature humans discover into the ocean. It actually constitutes a lot of challenges when we built this architecture, and、uh, I believe that it was in 2013. The design of this museum won several world-class prizes. So this、uh, maritime museum is actually the first big maritime museum since the establishment of the PRC. So its、uh, significance does not only、um, it does not only lie in the fact that this is a maritime museum, and it's also an education and experience center for people. After five years of construction, the museum was finally finished. So we really look forward to visiting this museum. Last year, when it was first open, people from all over the country、uh, have find it difficult to、um, make reservations online. This is a replica. 
of the fishing boat of the Song Dynasty. No nails are used, and the special technique, connection technique, was used. This is a very gigantic boat, uh, so but unfortunately we cannot board it today. This is very important to shipping equipment. Great invention at that time. Uh, this kind of um, isolation silos can make sure that uh, even if one of uh, the silos is filled with water, it will not affect the safety of the entire boat. We have also opened up uh, uh, experiencing activities online, uh, such as the Marine Time Radio and uh, um, videos to educate people about uh, ancient maritime creatures. So for information, you can refer to our official website and official um, Weibo account. During this special time, you may find it uh, um, you have a little bit of a leisure time to uh, know more about something that you're interested in. Thanks to the modern technologies, we now have uh, um, the possibility to visit this museum and learn about modern time knowledge online. It is actually a pity that uh, we don't have the opportunity to open up in this year's World Earth Day. But uh, after it reopens, we will have uh, um, open up 50, uh, uh, we have 5,000 more uh, square meters of exhibition floor spaces. And right now we are coming near to the uh, polar exhibition. In this exhibition hall, you will understand how important it is. Um, how how important polar ex, uh, polar environment is to us. So it's first time for us to um, meet all of the polar creatures. This is the polar exhibition hall. So the uh, north and the south poles are the coldest place on Earth. However, a lot of lovely creatures inhabit in these places. We can see some specimens, penguins. Currently, there are 58 known species of penguins. Not only do they uh, live in the um, polar regions, they also live in some um, uh, lower altitude regions. This is the Adli penguins. This is the uh, the king penguins. Here we can see a video showing how the penguins reproduce. The male penguin, after uh, the female penguin give gave birth, would uh, leave the group to uh, go to the ocean to seek foods. Uh, you can see that uh, the mother penguin covers the uh, baby penguin with its belly. In the Antarctica, the research penguin is not confined only to the environment, but also the study of its feces. The shrimps are the main source of food for penguins. 
and many other marine time creatures. Um, after eating these uh, uh, shrimps, the penguins would uh, lay the species, the the feces, in the um, in in the inland water system. So that is a actually connection between the land and the ocean. So what do you think is the color of uh, the feces? Green, yellow, red, or black, or all of uh, the mentioned above. I believe that uh, for uh, sea lovers, this is a this would be a um, easy question for you, and you're welcomed to interact with us online. The feces, the color of this uh, feces, are three folds. If it's uh, in the color of red, it shows that uh, it has eaten a lot of shrimps. When it's white, it shows that uh, it is eats a lot of fish. If it's in the color of white, it means that uh, the penguin is starving. Let's now take a look at the creature in the northern pole. Uh, these are specimens of uh, polar bears. You can see that it's very big in size. And the color of its fur is actually a light yellow. It's a mixture of white and yellow, actually. But actually, uh, the color of its fur is transparent. Underneath, the skin is in a color of black. I don't know if you can see them clearly. This is the secret for the polar bear to keep warm. This is, um, a, of course, a predator in the polar region. And uh, one of its uh, one of its uh, prey would be this um, spotted seal. Also, due to human activities and uh, the destroy destruction of the environment, the number of seals is also increasing. Uh, it's also decreasing, which in turn would reduce the food supply for polar bears. We also have the polar fox, very lovely. And you can also see this snow owl up there. So what kind of te technologies are applied when making these specimens? Well, of course, it takes a lot of time and energy uh, for the professionals in order to display to the um, visitors. It takes about a month to um, finish a specimen of even one bird because you have to um, uh, glue the feather of the birds one by one. On this side, we can see some of uh, the environmental uh, problems of the ocean. For example, global warming has taken its toll in the uh, polar regions. In the southern pole, we can also see some ozone layer depletion. Ozone layers are important to protect the creatures from being hurt by the, uh, uh, by the solar ray. If all of uh, the glaciers are melted, 
the sea level would rise by 70 meters, which means that about uh, two thirds of the land will be emerged under sea. However, we have been taking measures to protect the environment. Uh, we have built this kind of uh, scientific uh, stations in an Antarctica. We also have a lot of live streams. To tell you about, uh, uh, to, to tell you more about these uh, um, scientific uh, research stations. Now let's take a look at some of the scientific equipment used in the polar regions. This is um, a um, snow motorbike. It's something that you can experience. Take a ride. So this is how you would feel if you are on the Antarctic riding a snowmobile. These are um, real-time uh, films, yeah? We can also see some uh, um, vehicles, and also we'll be we'll have an experience ex experience the the drastic storm. So here you can learn a lot of uh, knowledge that uh, would be difficult to learn from textbooks. This is an experiencing room for the polar storms um, in the Antarctica, you can experience storms that is three times uh, stronger than the than the most drastic storms you can still experience on Earth. Would it mess up with my hair? So how strong is the wind? Because I have no idea. It's about seven to eight degrees hours. It can be three times stronger than um, the strongest wind on Earth. But I think it's very good experience. And from the experience, we can know how difficult it is for the uh, science, scientific workers to work in such harsh conditions. So that's a tour of the polar exhibition. The entire exhibition means to call on people's awareness to protect the environment. Um, here are some of the questions you might raise during your visit. Why are we building the research station? 
and what will Earth be if all the glaciers melted? Due to time constraint, it would be impossible for us to take, take you to every exhibit. But uh, I'm sure that we have shared some of uh, the most important knowledge and exhibits to you. You must realize it is important for and essential for us to protect the environment on a special day. We're hoping that you can learn some useful knowledge and improve your awareness of uh, environmental protection and start with uh, small behaviors in your lives because a lot of uh, professionals are doing what they can do to protect life and protect the environment. We also look forward to the reopening of the National Na Maritime Museum so that more people, especially young people, can come here and know more about the maritime uh, environment.